department in a local hospital might look like. So I, I could describe what I think. I think the, 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 the issue is that uh, we are currently awaiting the Keogh review for clarification, and in effect, uh, when we have that clarification, we will deliver what we are required to in that space. Uh, it is it is quite clear that at the moment it is it's not entirely clear what of the many options are in front of us we can deliver, and we, like other people, are waiting for that clarification. Well done. Um, I'm sorry, you can hear the reaction you're on. Um, all I'm asking you is what, in fact, the chairman asked an earlier presenter to do. Tell us what you would like it to be like. Not what you, not what it will be like, but tell us what you think you would like to see. So I will say what I would like to see then. Uh, I would like to build on the work that we're doing with uh, the a rapid assessment of elderly, frail and elderly patients who can be assessed on the day by uh, the specialist that they need to be uh, and then have a plan of care and then be returned to their home with appropriate support. I therefore think it would, I would like it to be a facility, a facility where ambulances will go, where they are taking patients appropriate to the services that are offered there, which will be a combination mm -hmm. of primary care services, secondary care services, like our patients, assessment and planning. So I see that as a, a part of a functional unit with the networks of GPs that we are working with, so that there will be more, a more coherent care, which bridges primary and secondary care. If I may just come back just with a comment on that. What you have described to me sounds to me, personally as a layman, very much like an urgent care centre that, that has ambulance delivery. Um, I'm not quite sure that I know now, today, even what this thing may look like. Uh, I, I understand the problem that you have in that the Keogh report will tell you what you can have. But I am concerned that we have been talking for a couple of years now about clinical-led services. And here we are, I'm talking to the clinicians and saying, what would you like it to be? And it's proving difficult to get a straight answer. So the difference between an urgent care centre and this is that rather than an urgent care centre is essentially uh, something that is led by primary care physicians, this will have secondary care specialists assessing, managing, and forming care plans for the patients. So it's not a primary care facility, it's something that bridges primary and secondary care, which uses the expertise that Imperial has, but does the predominant, predominant amount of treatment and care in the community. I'm still slightly mystified. Or with appendicitis. Yeah, sorry, let's just bring the meeting to order. Um, I was going to make this point myself, I think this is a what, uh, place in which to make it. Uh, one understands this Keogh review will be reporting back uh, in due course. I don't think anyone here is going to be uh, fooled or have the wall pulled over their eyes about different levels of A&E. So I think that there is a danger. It's a very dangerous path, I think, to go down semantics of having A and E, calling something A and E, and then having type one, two, three, four, yeah. however yeah. many it might be. Yeah. Yeah. It, it would be dangerous. So I think that we, regardless of uh, the names, people are, are unlikely to be fooled. I think, though, you've been very clear about clearly, Dr. Spicer, what you think it ought to be. Uh, so I'll say about it. You, you, you've said what you think it ought to be. I'm not sure I entirely understood it. Um, <laughs> the, 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 I think the question that we've discussed a number of times, so anyway, but let me, be, let me focus on the question. Um, the thing that we've discussed a number of times here is whether what the offering will be at Charing Cross Hospital is a GP led facility yes. in the moment. Can I just ask my question, Councillor Brown, please? Uh, now you're telling me that it's going to have secondary consultants on, secondary practitioners on site. Does that mean that there will be 
hospital consultants who will be in the lead at this uh, Charing Cross facility. So I don't know about in the lead, there will be a combination of primary care and secondary care physicians there, and that is part of the consultants, yes, consultants, uh, consultants and all grades of uh, uh, clinical staff. The, part of the design of it is that it is designed to break down the separation. So I've heard from Joe that we don't want further handoffs between primary and secondary care and people don't want to be lost in the system and I completely appreciate that for patients. One of the ways that we are addressing that within the local hospital is co-locating primary care clinicians with secondary care clinicians so that they work together to have a coherent response to the needs of the patient. So it is not led by either primary care or secondary care, it is meeting the needs of the patients. Excuse me, we had a brilliant hospital, yeah. a great hospital, okay. nothing wrong with That's, the sorry. Sorry. You're not You're not answering you're his not question. Answering you're not answering, you're not, you're not answering his question. No, we have to thank, thank you. Let's, let's just move on with the meeting. Um, so I, I think you I would hope acknowledge the fact for slight confusion because previously when we've discussed this it's been very clear that this was a GP led facility. Now you're telling me clearly it's something else and there's a mixture of uh, consultants and primary care. So that's fine but of course this is a different answer to the one you gave the last time we discussed this. So I think we need to be very clear. There was talk last time that we discussed this about having video conferences with consultants on other sites. So the fact is that you're telling me a different story to the one you told me before. Now, I'm getting slightly angry about that, but I'm sorry about that. But you, you, you've got to understand that this clinical strategy is different, or the story that you've told is different to the one that was told before. Now, I think that hopefully you can shed some light on this. It's in, in, can you explain in what way these uh, primary uh, primary care uh, consult primary care doctors and hospital consultants are going to work together. So that it's not inconsistent with my, well, I don't believe it's inconsistent with my previous answer. The idea that the whole of the local, the whole of the local hospital um, was led by primary care physicians was never correct. There was always going to be a combination of primary and secondary care clinicians there, principally because within the planning, there are uh, 200,000 outpatient appointments on that site, and outpatient appointments are generally done by secondary care doctors. So there was always going to be a combination of the two. The, the difference is that if a patient is received and turns up one way or another to the local hospital, they can be managed either by a primary care physician or a secondary care physician, depending on their needs. If they have specialist or complex needs, then they will be uh, dealt with by the appropriate clinician. So my meet-up is cancelled so that the consultant can go and check out what's happening in the urgent care centre. That makes sense. Uh, so, that's very amazing. so, so, uh, the, the, so the, the point I draw back to is just this needs to be very clear. I feel that I've been given several, well, at least two different stories about what's happened. Yes. Uh, and the one that I'm hearing tonight is very different to the one that I've heard at previous meetings. Uh, but I want us all to be clear about exactly what the offer is because um, there's a difficulty in communication here, and I think it's for you to communicate precisely to me. Uh, to the rest of the committee and to the members of the public here about exactly what is going to be at the Charing Cross site and I don't think that that's been communicated well so far so it'd be great if you took it away and came back with a clearer explanation for us next time. Councillor mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks.